Hi, my name is Jared Smith. I'm one of the architects for NGFW Management, and I'm here with Veer on the DevNet team, and we're going to talk about Firepower Management Center and the, the REST API, and in particular, we're going to go into some of the use cases for how you could use the REST API, and particularly compliance, policy change, the addition of rules, and then migration use cases are what we're going to go through today. Pretty exciting topic. I'll pass yes. it off to you. Thank you, Jared. Hi, I'm Christian Veer. I'm developer evangelist with Cisco DevNet. I focus on security technologies. And um, today we're going to talk about the FMC uh, uh, use cases, which is very exciting uh, because uh, what is API, when we release them, they should have certain use cases. And there are some which are very obvious. But most of the use cases uh, uh, are actually very custom use cases which customers and partners come up with, and that's why APIs are so popular, because they unlock a lot of ability in a product. So today, the main use cases which we're going to touch upon is actually um, the um, compliance tool. Compliance tool is like you have, um, um, a, this is a very simple use case. It's mostly a, a read only use case where you are actually reading uh, 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 the configuration and actually shipping it off for third party to look at your rules and if your posture is the way you want it to be. And so so it's a very helpful tool. Currently, maybe you are like shipping these Excel spreadsheets where you dump all your rules and send it to third party auditor. With API, you can actually write a tool which actually does that for you. And then the second one, which is very important one, and that's where mostly you uh, is your uh, policy changes and addition. But when I, when I say policy, I am encapsulating everything underneath it. Like you are probably doing bulk modifications on objects, or you're doing bulk modifications on rules. Um, you can use APIs to do that. And the third tool, which 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 I'm talk, which we are covering here, is the migration tool. This is a tool which you can write using APIs, where you have to copy configuration of one device uh, to the other device, and that device can be from the other vendor, which you want to move to Cisco NGFW, or it can be our ASA, and you want to migrate to Cisco NGFW. You can use this tool and use APIs to create the migration tool. So. Moving forward, um, the first one which we want to tackle is the compliance tool. Uh, this is where you're going to actually either you can provide a network access to the third party vendor who actually um, an external auditor who does audit for you, or you can write a tool and that tool can create in whatever format this auditor wants to consume. So a simple use case would be like you, you, you wrote a tool here. Um, this is your REST client, um, and this client actually goes to FMC, and it actually just reads all the, because this is a simple use case, because all you do is reading the configuration. You're reading rules, so and... Can, can I limit, like if it's, let's say I have a third-party auditor, just like you're saying, can I limit what they can do with the REST API so they can't go change my policy? I'm glad you asked that, Jared, because um, FMC actually has um, a, a very, um, what we call, role-based access control. So yeah, you can create a, a user which has only read-only access, and, and that way they cannot execute any other Perfect. command. Uh, they cannot do like create um, or delete, right? So this will not be allowed using because their profile is read. Or you can write your own tool if you don't give access. And in your tool, this client also, you will configure using UI as a user which has only read-only access. So that way you are very safe. Yep. So moving on, um, another use case which we are um, currently, uh, we have learned from our customers and partners is that if you have multiple um, FMCs, you probably want to maintain uh, similar posture with respect to rules, and it's it's a big problem for compliance. So that's then it becomes even more easy because you write this tool, and this tool can actually go to each FMC, and 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 get the get the information which is required for the audit, whether it is rules or objects, and get them re it, it consolidated into one place, right? And then you can actually create that. 
um, uh, a, a nice uh, document which you can ship to the external auditor. So these simple use cases get unlocked, and this is one of those which we uh, discussed. So let's move on to the next one. Um, this is a widely used use case. Um, this is where I think most of the time, most of the people will be using REST API. You have um, you 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 have bunch of like either uh, bulk of um, you have bunch of rules or you have objects and. You want to, and objects like what I mean is like, um, let's say you have a network, network object, and so you you want to do either bulk modification, so like um, you you want to do uh, on FMC for multiple devices. This can be multiple devices, right? Or you want to do um, um, changes on multiple FMCs. So if you're a large enterprise or you're a managed service provider. You have like four FMCs running, and you want to push uh, bulk changes on all the FMCs. You can do that, right? This uh, this enables that. Or if you are actually um, want to cha make changes on multiple devices in a single shot, you can do that as well. You can let FMC know and and then deploy them. So this is widely used, very very uh, easy uh, configuration. And another thing this does is actually. Um, it takes away, if you're doing this using UI, you are probably, first of all, you have to go to the four or five different UIs in FMCs and, and, and connect to them, each one open, and you, you have to use the whole policy. You have to uh, browse through multiple pages to do that. In, in API, once you have done it for one FMC, you can actually push. Uh, the same uh, Python routine can push to the multiple uh, so no, another FMCs. another related thing that you could probably do here is if if I had multiple FMCs, I could potentially r read the data from one, and if like if I'm let's say I'm adding a new FMC or I want to keep the objects the same on two of them, I could call the API, read it on one, and move, kind of copy it to the other FMC to keep them in sync. Absolutely, right. and you just unlocked another use case, Jared. So that's another use case, like we are discussing. This is another use case which Jared talked about. What he's saying is that um, you have a FMC. Just restating what Jared is mentioning is that you have multiple FMCs. So this is your FMC one, uh, and this is your FMC two. This is your FMC three. So what he's what the use case which he just uh, mentioned is that you have a configuration which is like a gold here, and you want to replicate that over this FMC so you can read from here your tool. You can write a tool here, um, which actually reads from this FMC, and then actually goes and updates this FMC, and similarly it does that to this FMC as well. And these FMC may have multiple NGFWs here, right? So. Ultimately, what FMCs are doing is pushing this configuration on NGFW. Let's not forget that. So they have their NGFW over here, cluster of MGW, NGFW over here. So whatever this FMC's device's posture was, uh, which, which we thought is a gold, or we are just spinning off a regional office or uh, a new country, and we want to maintain the same posture over here, we can actually very easily do that using API. Yep. So that's another use case which get unlocked using APIs. So let's quickly move on to the migration tool. Um, this is another example, an excellent example. You just actually, um, you just have uh, bought uh, Cisco NGFW, and, and you are very happy because you made that investment. And you have these old devices which are lying around, which is like you are not very happy with from some other vendor. Um, and you would like to copy, um, or the configuration from this device to NGFW. So you, you can do that, actually, because you can write a tool here, uh, which is your migration tool. And this is what I'm talking about. This is a tool probably running on, on, on a computer. And this tool actually can make API calls via FMC uh, Center and, and actually read configuration from here if it is a new vendor. Uh, it can actually read configuration from here and push it to FMC, and then FMC can push it down to the new device. So it's a very easy way to migrate. 
uh, whatever uh, sanity you need to do, you can do it in the tool about the data because one-on-one -on -one mapping is hard to find uh, from one vendor to the other vendor, but you can do some sanity check here and push it using API over there. If you're using Cisco ASA, you can do the same thing. So if you want to migrate from Cisco ASA to Cisco NGFW, um, you can actually write a tool uh, using FMC which can do that migration for you too. From 6.2.3, it's much easier to do that migration. So that's uh, the two tools which are excellent, and these are the use cases we wanted to cover, Jared. Well, thank you very much, Veer. That, that was great. And what, just to kind of recap, we went through the compliance use case, we went through the rule edition, maybe object edition use case, and the migration use case. And I think this, this really shows off the power of the API to meet these use cases and let the, let the customer really get what they need to get done. And, and that's our goal. And it also helps us integrate with other, other tool vendors that want to call our API because, it, I mean, without an API, it's hard for people to integrate. So this lets both the customer and thir third party tools integrate with us. And of course, you can learn much more about this with the DevNet Labs and the Sandboxes. So please stay, keep, keep looking at those, keep learning. Thank you very much. Thank you.